Now that we already model our eye, we're going to add some nice textures and materials to it, to it. But first we need light, of course. So, just add a spot there as my key light. Then duplicate it and uh, put it on the back. Change it to Emmy so we have nice regular lighting from the back. Non-specular, of course, otherwise it will mess our nice bright we have from our spotlight. In which we are going to tweak its settings for the shadows just pretty fast. I don't like default settings, just that. And then take it a little bit from the 3D view. Just press W and you can access the special menus for this lamp. That's awesome. So, by default, all our materials have a shadow buffers option on, which tells Blender that every material is going to project shadows. And we don't want that, actually. The eye, the eye cornea material is projecting shadows over the iris. So the iris will look really dark and we don't want that actually, we want the iris to, to get light. So we disable the shadow buffer option from the links and pipeline panel, not the one in the shaders panel, there is a shadow option there as well. But that one is actually for disabling the material to receive shadows. I, you can see if I disable it, there's no shadow. But we don't want that, we just enable that one. The, the one in uh, the shaders panel and we disable the one on links and pipeline. That's what we want. So let's make uh, the iris look a little bit more interesting than that ugly blue. So we load a texture, Merlin iris. Yep, that is already on the on this folder as well. So by default in uh, most tutorials I've seen when they mobilize, they use these uh, Orco settings, uh, original coordinate settings for mapping, mapping the textures, but I don't think it will work here because uh, our characters are tuned and they will deform with, the, the, with the, all the shape and everything. So if we deform our eye, the mapping will change as well and that could bring some troubles with the, with the texture, it will change the position and everything, or size even. So we don't want that, we want the texture to stick to the mesh, so we use uh, UV mapping instead of Orco on the map input panel. And now we're going to actually make the UV for this part of the eye, the iris. So we select the vertices we want, press U, and wrap and uh, a little bit distorted there so let's go to the front view and uh, use project from view instead but the second option the one that says project from view bounce because that will make uh, besides mapping from the view it will also scale our, our UV to the bounding box of the of our UV image editor in case we have an image it will scale, scale to the size of that image, but we don't have anything now, so it will just uh, scale to the to the default square, the grid there. So now we need some tweaking here, especially the, the part of the in the middle. So you can blend better with the pupil. So what we are going to do now is to use this texture not as a color only because by default our textures are mapped uh, to the color setting of our material but we don't want that we don't want a gray eye, we want some color in it, so we will click on the no RGB option, there, and now Blender won't use the real colors from the image, it will just use the values of it, the gray values. So that way we could use the normal color from the 
from the material and just use the intensity from this texture. I just duplicated this texture and tweaked the contrast and brightness of it on the texture settings so I can highlight only some parts of this texture which is nice, it gives some special highlights in some parts only and ok, I'm using a fall off effect again once again which is just a blend type sphere texture map to the normals and the coordinates are uh, 0, 0, 0, Z or nothing, nothing, Z actually but now instead of mapping it to the color I'm mapping it to the ref little button there which is the diffuse shader the amount of uh, reflection from this diffuse shader so as you can see now depending on the rotation of our eye where it is looking we will have uh, our, uh, our eye is actually lit I also enabled the spec so uh, this texture will also handle the specularity of this material so as you can see when I rotate it it leads only one part of the of the iris which gives some uh, sense of depth to it you can also try to increase this uh, effect make it more stronger by playing with the varices there with the curve of it you can make it more strong more sharp you can add more varices here just play with this shape well actually in OpenGL view you can't really see that because I have this material all uh, without with the reflection value on the diffuse uh, like uh, in zero because it's controlled by the texture in mode in mix mode blending mode so to avoid this we will just raise the value from the shaders uh, slider ref we're going to raise it all the way to 1 and we will use our blend texture instead of mix we are going to use multiply mode so the values from this texture will multiply with the value from the ref slider on the shaders panel this way the it doesn't change the rendering uh, at all actually it's just for the 3d view but if you are using a, a GLSL you don't have to worry about that actually it's just for normal OpenGL previsualization in solid view so nice now it's a, a little bit more stronger our effect and you can only see it in some parts some positions that's nice because when it's uh, animated it, it gives some uh, some uh, little bit more alive effect to the eye it's nice you can always uh, just increase this effect by for example making our texture also affect the normal of this uh, of this material using the this texture so y the lighting has a, uh, a bit more information to play with you can also just duplicate the blend texture oh the pupil just just shadeless we don't want the pupil to actually have some light there so we are done with the iris and with the pupil so it's time for the cornea first of all if you have a, a nice computer and you want to use the fancy features I will use uh, instead of C-transp for the transparency of, this, uh, of the cornea I will use Ray-transp okay it's a bit slower but it, it gives some nice effect if you really want to go further with this uh, lens effect for the cornea 
So by tweaking the Fresnel, you can see through this uh, through this cornea, and you can also distort a little bit what is behind the cornea. That's nice. With the index of refraction slider, E or I or I O R, sorry, R. And that way, if you oh shit, yeah, um, you have to enable ray tracing, of course. <laughs> okay, now it works. Yep. So this way, you are. You have this nice effect, and when the when the eye really is from the profile view, you can see how it distorts everything behind this lens a little bit. If you really increase the the I O R value, the in the soft refraction, and it could really mess up everything behind it. We don't want that. Just a little bit. Just a little detail, actually. Another detail is the spec uh, specular bright from this, from the cornea actually. I like to use the tone shader because it's a really s strong specular there, and also looks pretty nice when distorted. So that's it for now. Let's move to the eye glow.